Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, we're going to talk about white balance and how it applies to a RAW file compared to how it applies to a JPEG. Now, I'm doing this demonstration in Lightroom, but really the application doesn't matter because what I'm going to be talking about is really applicable to any application you're using. Now, I have this image this is a raw file and when i took this image i actually had my camera set up so it took a raw file and a jpeg at the same time so this is the raw file no processing was done to it at all next to it i have the jpeg and i actually did do a tiny bit of processing here specifically in the lens corrections i went to the manual tab and i tried to remove a vignette because i'll turn this off and you could see that the JPEG compared to the RAW file has a really heavy vignetting uh, compared to the RAW file. So I just wanted that to be relatively equal as best I could. So I brightened up the edges with the manual lens correction uh, vignetting tool over here, just so it looks a little more equal. It still isn't perfect, obviously, but it's a little better and it will help you better understand what we're doing with white balance. Now, of course, in Lightroom, white balance is in the basic tab. And there's actually two main differences at first glance. First of all, this drop down. When you're on a raw file, this will have all these different choices. And these are the choices that are in your camera for white balance, right? Daylight, cloudy, shade, and all that. But if you go over to the JPEG, what you'll find is you won't have those choices. You'll only have auto and custom. So that is one difference between a JPEG and a RAW file as far as white balance is concerned. The other difference is the temperature slider. You could see that the temperature slider when you're on the JPEG just goes from a value of minus 100 to plus 100. And you just slide the slider. And by default, the temperature and tint sliders will be right in the middle. But when we go over to the raw file, you can see that temperature slider no longer goes from minus 100 to plus 100. It's now giving you a Kelvin value. So right now it's 5,700 Kelvin. Uh, the tint also is moved off center to plus 13. And again, this wasn't uh, processed at all. This is straight out of camera. And as far as white balance is concerned, the JPEG is straight out of camera as well. The reason for that is when you shoot raw, you really don't um, commit to a white balance for that raw file. It will give you, when you open it up in an application such as Lightroom, it will give you the white balance you had set in the camera that will, what, it will be what will be displayed, but you'll be able to change it in post-production. Conversely, as soon as you create a JPEG, it takes whatever white balance settings you had and it bakes them into the JPEG. So now when we go over to the JPEG, this as shot setting 5,700 plus 13, that is baked into this. And you technically can't change that. That's why the dropdown doesn't have those other values there. But you can affect it with these sliders, the temperature and tint slider, or actually the eyedropper tool. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the moment. So we have these uh, this major difference, right, where the raw file isn't committed to a white balance. It shows you one, the one you had set in the camera, but you could change it uh, at will to anything you want in that dropdown. Whereas the JPEG has that white balance um, kind of baked in. Well, all right, that's fine. But what? let's say that you're working on a raw file and you adjust the white balance. And let's just, let, I'm gonna just do this very, uh, you know, I ugly all right i want it to look obvious all right so i did this white balance adjustment uh 14905 kelvin minus 62 with the tent let's say now i create a preset of this all right so i go over uh, to my presets i click a little plus sign i go create presets and we don't want everything checked we're going to check none and we're just actually going to click on white balance so i'm just going to do a white balance preset and we'll call it wb for white balance and we'll click create. All right, so now uh, in my user presets, I have this WB white balance. And to prove it works, I'll reset this. I'll go back and I'll apply that white balance. All right, so it applied it. 14905 Kelvin minus 6210. Go over to the JPEG. 
Now this JPEG effectively has that same starting point of white balance that the raw file had, right? But I'll click on this now. Now look at the difference between the two. You could see that the white balance for the JPEG uh, JPEG really affected the tone as well. It made the brights brighter in this case. Um, probably made everything a little brighter, even the shadows as well. Whereas the white balance is adjusted on the raw file, didn't. It just didn't do it. It just uh, uh, kind of changed the white balance because again, you're not committed to a white balance uh, with the raw file at, to start with. Um, you could just easily change it and then um, hopefully, <laughs> you know, come up with something that looks good, not that horrible preset that I just did. Uh, but you get the idea, hopefully, that... Um, let me undo all this stuff here. So you get the idea then that the white balance is a lot more versatile when you're working on a raw file. So if you don't already shoot raw, and in the past you found that your JPEGs were difficult to fix the white balance with, you might want to consider shooting raw, or at the very least shoot raw and JPEG in your camera. You'll still have the JPEGs that you most often will be using, but if you have an image that is um, proving difficult to fix the white balance with, you may have better luck working on the raw file with that. Now as far as the eyedropper is concerned, uh, this is kind of hit and miss on different images. Uh, typically, if you take a white dropper, you want to pick on something that is, or click on something that is neutral, like a white cloud, right? So if you click on that, that adjusts the white balance. And if I try to keep that same uh, area in for the uh, next image and click there, you can see that in this image here, it's pretty much the same. It's hard to tell because of that vignetting issue, but it's pretty much the same. But it's been my experience that sometimes with JPEGs, it tends to be stronger, um, so it looks stronger. And that really is, you know, depending on the JPEG you use. So the, the overall, though, I would say the eyedropper tool is pretty equal, pretty equal overall. Although every now and then you'll find that it will be a stronger one way or the other. So if it's making the image cooler, it's going to go even cooler on the JPEG compared to the RAW file. If you're making the image warmer, it's going to go even warmer on the JPEG compared to the RAW file. As you saw in this image, it was pretty much equal. So um, those are the main issues I think you'll encounter with white balance when you're working on a RAW file or if you're working on a JPEG. Just remember, the JPEG has that initial white balance burnt into it. You know, it's cooked in. And there's... Um, you just can't remove it and add a different one. You have to add another one on top of it. So that's why things look different when you use presets and things like that. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.